Okay, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Today we are talking about roll top desks and the locks that are on them. Roll top desks are the uh, desks that have a rolling top, as evidenced by the name, and when it comes down, it automatically locks. Typically, the lock is mounted in the frame of the desk and in the lid of the desk, there is a strike. And when the strike comes down, and engages in the holes in the bottom of the desk where it surfaces out, it can automatically lock. And we see this quite a bit. We have quite a, quite a few questions about it. We've serviced our area. We make keys for these. So today I'm just gonna go ahead and talk to you a bit about it and we're gonna make a key. So the three main types, there's one that is a, a bit style that is not hollow and they all have these wings on them and there's two that is the barrel style key and that is used for the locks like we have laid out here that have the center post it's very easy to tell which type you have to a degree the ones with the post sticking out the center now beware that post can break so if you look down in there the type like this actually has a hole in the bottom of it with no post but there are a few where if this post breaks out it leaves the hole and when you look down in there you think oh no post there's a hole that uses this key it actually just may be broken and missing it's very common over the years uh, as these get older for that post to sometimes break out so beware of that, but for the most part, if you see a post, you're gonna use one of the two hollow style keys. The two different measurements on it are roughly half an inch for the smaller one. Wide. And then the larger size is roughly three quarters of an inch. So to deduce the two of them, you would simply hold this up. Now this, you're not gonna see anything but the keyhole when this is mounted on a cabinet. And I don't have a discussion for this, I don't think, but you're gonna see there's gonna be a layer of wood because this is recessed into the back and a half mortise style. And you're, so you're gonna see a layer of wood and you're also gonna have that, that discussion most likely on the outside. Sometimes that discussion is missing, so you just have wood but so there is a gap between the two. So if you hold your tape measure up to it and it's roughly three quarters of an inch, you're gonna need the bigger key. If it's smaller and roughly half an inch, it's gonna be a little bit bigger because when they cut the wood out, you know, it's gonna be bigger around. So you're gonna kinda of wanna to try to eyeball the metal. So uh, that's in the bottom of the wood there. So once you've determined which key you use, it really doesn't matter as far as the process of making a key. The process of making a key is just like any other key, a bit barrel key, but it's a little bit different because both wings have to do something when it's turning. Whereas when you have a regular bit key like this on a desk, only one side has to turn, it has to get past those wafers. The, the, the difference between the roll top desk is both sides of the wings have to simultaneously lift the insides of the lock. Um, so we're going to talk about a few tools that you're going to need to do this. Number one, you're going to need a paper towel because we're going to be using uh, soot and it gets dirty and you're going to need to wipe it off. And most likely if you're doing this for a customer, you're going to be at their house and they you know, have a nice carpet, you don't wanna mess anything up. So you may need more than one paper towel. Next, you're gonna need a file, or two, or three, or four. That's a little bit overkill. If that's all you have is a file, uh, that'll work for the roughing in. We're gonna get rid of that. Even a smaller one? Yeah, you could still use that. I prefer this one. A little bit smaller, a little bit easier to move around and kind of gives you a little bit more control. And last but not least, which you can pick this up at any cheapy store, is go grab you a 10 pack of needle files. Some of them have handles, some don't. I don't care about the handles, so I get this one. And actually out of this needle file set, really the only one you're gonna use is one of the flat ones. So we'll go ahead and yank out the 
flat. And some of them have flats on them, like this one is a triangular file, but one side is perfectly flat, so you can use that. And uh, that's really it out of there. The rest of these have angles and stuff that you really do not need. Because when you're doing bit or barrel or roll top desk keys, you are going to need parallel lines instead of V lines like you use in pen tumbler. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. I'm just going to use this small one and leave these two out. Next, you're going to need a lighter and a candle. Now, the flavor of the candle, the smell, the scent does not matter at all. That is absolutely your preference. Uh, Zippo is not really great to light a candle with, but we'll give it a shot here. Get your candle lit, lit, lit. And set it aside. And we're gonna zoom out in just a minute before we get started. Make sure that if you're using a candle that you use a good uh, surface underneath it to protect the surface there. And lastly, we are going to need, uh, that is it, that's all you need. Okay, so, okay, let's go ahead and talk about what you're going to see when you look into a lock. One thing I didn't mention was a flashlight. Very good to have a headlamp or a flashlight while you're working on this. So what you're going to see after you can see past the wood is most likely you're going to see some kind of levers at the bottom there. You're not going to be able to see the wafers at the top and bottom that actually are spring loaded but as with any project that you're setting about with it's always a good idea to know what you're getting into before you do so because you can damage these locks if you're rough or not careful so i'm going to go ahead and unscrew one of these and we're going to talk about the insides of it so that we know what we're doing prior to it now, obviously, you're not going to be able to do that with it locked and firmly fastened onto the cabinet, but that's why we're doing this, to be able to get it open. So you see here we have two wafers on each side. And then two rigid, I guess I could have brought out my... Tweezers for this. Okay, and then we're gonna have these two rigid, which this would be considered um, a ward per se. And if we see in this one, this ward stacks up to equal the height of this ward here. That basically it's not really a ward, but that is what allows these to ride on. So when you're making a key, what you have to do with these is when the key turns, now this is still a blank key, we're gonna to get to cutting it down in a minute. Once the key is bottomed out, we're gonna see that it's gotta get past this first ward and then get past the second ward. And those are fixed, so when we're impressioning this lock, that is your no, no spring pressure. You have to overcome that before you start to feel the spring pressure. Now on traditional bit barrel key locks, what you're trying to do is turn it in a full circle for the most part on most of them. So you're trying to overcome the spring pressure. You're trying to get past the spring pressure. On these locks, you have to maintain a spring pressure. So that is a key difference in making making the key from the outside when it's locked is you, you've got to understand that that you're not trying to bypass that spring because if you bypass the spring the key will just turn around and around and it's not going to open it up so what you're trying to do is you're trying to have just the right amount of tension on that key when you're impressing it but before we even get to the spring pressure we have to bypass those two wards so the tip of the key will have to be cut down I'm just going to leave this over here so that we can reference it while we're working on another one. I think these were all key to light, but 
Let's see. Let's hold it up and see. Uh, no, those wafers are moved around. So to make that a different key, we can move the wafers around. So let us just impression this one to be on the safe side. We can take apart one of the other ones and maybe just flip those wafers around. So after you've got your candle lit and going and you have taken the measurements to decide which key you have and have you gotten your key prepared, your initial step is roughing down the key so that it'll actually fit in the key cylinder because typically it's as with any other bit barrel key it's going to be a key blank and it is not going to enter the lock at all so we have to cut down the key now this can be done a number of ways uh, most of the time you're going to have to eyeball it if the cabinet is locked so once you put this down in there kind of get a bright flashlight and look down the past the wood to see where it's stopping at and we see this is almost going in so we're not too far off on that okay we're going to take the key down just a bit to bypass to get into the lock and then we're going to have to take the key down this way for it to fit and turn because as you can see the flag is a lot deeper than the body of the lock so when we get done we're going to be taking off about this much of the key but first to to understand what we need to do there we first have to get it down into the lock so i have a flat surface out here this can be done on your knee or anything else again this is where your paper towels come into play so you don't get these shavings in the carpet or anywhere else like that around the area that you're working always maintain a clean work environment take one side off take an equal amount off the other side remember this didn't require much depending on how coarse your file is you're going to be taking off metal fairly quick this is a pretty coarse little file so okay that's about right in your quest to do this you want to if you're spending the time to make the key you want to try to be as patient as possible because you don't want to have to remake this key you want to be able to make a key that opens it for them and be done have the key okay so we're going to go back to the desk and we try our key and we see it bottoms out now make sure this is very very important make sure that it actually bottoms out because if one of these say these wafers right here the the ward wafers were sticking further down this key may actually hit one of those ward wafers and not go all the way down so you want to kind of make sure before you start with this removal that your key is for sure bottomed out on this one we can tell it is and you can tell by looking down the keyway if those are kind of in line you see how one of them in the very back is kind of sticking out further that one may be worse and if it was sticking further down you would definitely see it in this area of the lock and at that point your key would need to at least the tip of the key would need to be filed down before you start doing the flag part but we see this is all the way down and we're going to have to take quite a bit of this material off so i'm going to speed that up real quick
Okay, as you saw in that sped up video, we've taken down most of this. Now it did, it was speeded up, so you really couldn't tell. As you're following that down, you want to stay away from the shank of the key. You don't want to cut into the shank, so I usually use just, leave just a little bit on the edges. That way I can come in from the side and knock it down little by little. So we've gotten to the point in the filing of the lock that you have to start being pretty careful. You don't want to overshoot this mark because if you overshoot anything with a bit barrel make, you are gonna kind of be in trouble there. We're gonna to switch to our small file because that's what we have them for. We're gonna clean up that shoulder. And the reason we have to have a smooth shoulder is because some of them are very exact right here and it does have to pass by that and you can see here that we're really close you would be able to tell that by looking down and looking down with a flashlight seeing kind of where you're at in relation to this upper part of the metal housing and we're pretty close so we're going to switch to this fine file And, well, actually I'm gonna go back and forth just for speed purposes. And you may also see when I was doing that video or notice that I kept checking the lock over and over. Now, there are a number of ways that you could take that metal off. You could use a Dremel, you could use a grinder, you could use a, a machine for that, but we're, we're doing this in the presumption that we're sitting in front of a locked desk on the ground doing this. So we see that we need, still need to clean up that shoulder. It's not gonna turn right until it bypasses that shoulder. So let's go ahead and knock that down. Now, it would be easier to use like a vice grip or something on the head of this key. This is pretty hard on the thumb. Um, depending on the day and circumstance, I would probably use something to hold the key, like a vice grip. Yeah, as with you were, if you were impressioning a key, you would use a vice grip to hold the key. Same theory, but you're not gonna be using that to get a lot of torque. You don't wanna do, you're not gonna be using a lot of torque on this key while you're impressioning. Whereas with uh, like wafer locks or pin tumbler locks that you're impressioning, you would use a heavier turning action. You don't necessarily need to do that with bit barrel keys. So again, we're gonna check it here. Now that we got that shoulder down, using our flashlight to be able to see whether or not we are bypassing the metal. Now remember, we've got those wards, so it's not gonna allow it to turn, those wards in the back of the key. So you kinda have to be uh, eyeballing, judgmental here about this, but we can see we're not quite there on this side. So let's go ahead and file that down a little bit more. Another thing is you wanna be perfectly parallel. You want that line, that edge of the key to be perfectly 90 degree angle. As you're filing, it gets kinda hard to maintain that straight so that's why every so often you come in and cut it or file it like this all right let's see what it does now 
Okay, we can see that one side is definitely going through. We can see the other side is definitely almost going through. Let me get you in camera so you can actually see that. Holding up our light to it. Okay, we know that side's good. This side we're not sure of and that's because of the wards. So at this point, we are pretty much done roughing in the key. Now I'm gonna go ahead and smooth it off. These keys are uh, cast molded or whatever. So you're gonna kinda want a smooth edge so that you can see marks that are left when you're turning the key. And we are about to finally use the candle that we have lit here. Okay, so I'm gonna come over to our candle and just hold it right above the flame. Careful not to burn your fingers. Now this is a common trick with all bit barrel key makes. Whew. Now might be a, ow, now might be a good time to go grab that pair of pliers so that I don't burn my wee little fingers here. But anyway, we're gonna hold it right above the flame. Now, of course, if this is not locked on a desk, you don't have to do all this. You can just take the lock apart or you can eyeball it from the outside. This one comes apart, but some of them don't, so you may still have to do this, even if the lock, because the locks, if they're pinned together right here, instead of having screws, sometimes they're factory like pinned on and you don't really want to try to pry it apart. So we're gonna get a good set on both sides of our key. And we're gonna put it down in there and then turn it both ways. Now on these, I know that most of the time it's wards only on one side. And you're not gonna be feeling it, you're gonna feel a dead stop for the most part. You may feel spring pressure. If you feel spring pressure already, then there's no wards and you can go ahead and continue on to a later step. But with no spring pressure, and we're sure that it's bypassing underneath here, then we know that there are blocking wards. So we're going to kind of take the key and rock it back and forth, turning it both ways and pull it out. And we can see our bright as day mark on the tip there so we know that that has to come down for it to do anything and again because you can use this key either way whatever we take down from this side for the ward needs to be taken down on that side for the ward now remember we have two wards in there depending on the wards as long as you bypass one of the wards you'll you'll bypass the other one so the deepest ward. Once you pass the deepest ward, you'll, you'll bypass the other ones. So we're gonna go ahead and, and we don't know that because we're outside the lock, but we're gonna go ahead and start to file down the very tip of the key. It's kind of hard in the beginning to get it, but once you start filing down onto it, you can, you're definitely good because you got that lip to help you. Ooh. Now I'm using the bigger one, bigger file instead of the smaller file. This is typically where your jeweler files come into play. See, we're coming down with that tip. Now 
Now there's no hard fast rule on how far you file down on these. As far as depths go, like number of depths and how far each depth is, that really widely varies on the lock and how well it's made. Most of these are, like I said, two or three levers at most. So a lot of times as you're making the key, if you're lucky, you may stumble across the key being half made and just being able to trip it up, trip it unlocked. So be prepared as you do this and as you check your key, be prepared to be able to lift up on the roll top throughout this process. each side kind of equally done there uh, that one I did a little bit deeper but that's okay because there are actually two wards in there we're gonna go ahead and square them up and we have to reapply our soot. Now this is pretty much a good example of your first your first cutting here. Oop. See this needs to square up a little bit. That needs to go just a bit deeper. Now, I hadn't tried it in the lock. I'm just pretty much keeping them square or equal with each other. Okay. All right. So the key can always be cleaned up later for our squaring edges and stuff. Right now we're just, we're just going through the process trying to get it open. And ow, like I mentioned earlier, open with the key made so that you don't have much to do besides clean the key up. Again, with them only being two or three levers, they're not really considered high security. Some people may be asking about just bypassing these, picking them. Because of how they're designed, they actually, especially for the U.S. market who are not used to dealing with this type of lock really anymore, commonly, um, you think you can just pick it like a regular lever or wafer lock. It's actually kind of difficult to do because those levers are under spring tension and they both have to be lifted up. And U.S. market really doesn't go towards uh, bypass tools for that. So we're going to go ahead and put our key in. And we're gonna turn it. We see that it is turning more now. Which is good. That's turning more than it did before. That's very good. That means that we're bypassing one of the wards. So since we have our sit on there, we're gonna go ahead and rock it a little bit. And it just bypassed the ward and I can feel spring. I can feel it being springy now. So we're gonna take it out and we're gonna look and we see we have some marks on the blade there. Let's go ahead and put this together so we'll have that satisfaction of, ah, when it drops apart. Okay, so we got spring pressure. We know we're passing by our wards. We could take the key and turn it around and see, and it's not. So that means we need to come a little bit further down on this side. 
Again, it's a good idea to keep them both kind of equal because it's really nice to be able to get the cabinet open and be automatically done with the key at the same time. So we're gonna try it on that side. We got the spring. And try it on that side. We're still not very springy. So we're gonna turn it and look at it to see why. And we can see a nice little knock off of the soot right there. So that means we need to come down just a bit. Remember, not too much. Working with very small measurements there. All right, so now it bypasses it. We can feel the springy. Turn it around. Not bypassing it. So we're gonna look at it again. We're gonna see that it still needs to come down right there. And we're also gonna see that it probably could be used, squared up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and square it up on this side because this is the side that's being just a little troublesome. Okay, and we're gonna try it. Now we see we go till it becomes spring tensiony. Little tight, going to Hit that, hit that side with some soot. Just to see why it's a little tight. And feel it kind of catching in there. All right, and we see on the top of the blade, we can see the marks that are probably that second ward. So, again, we're just gonna bypass both of these. So I'm gonna bring it in a little bit. I'm gonna bring this side in a little bit. clean it up in preparation for the actual levers. Get your paper towel, maybe wipe it down, get the extra soot off. And then smooth our edges down to see how vertical we are. Not very vertical. I need to take off a little bit right there. So let's go ahead and do that. Now again, we've already bypassed the spring, the uh, the warding, so we could continue on. You know, we're just trying to get this cabinet open, and less concerned say that there is a, a key in there that fits. We would be less concerned with finishing out this key, and we go ahead and progress to the just getting it open to get to the key. We see this side's a little bit deeper than that side, but now we're working on these back sides. So let's go ahead and uh, we can check it before we do that. Okay, it's turning. Good, feel that spring tension in there. Okay, let's take a look and see what we got going on in there. We see our warding area. It's bypassing it. And this is why sometimes it may feel a little loose to you, like it's actually unlocking the cabinet, but it's when in reality it's not. So when you turn this key, this is pushing up on one side, usually pushing up on both sides. 
so you get a feeling that it's a little bit looser but what's happening is when you're pushing up on that one side and down on the other it may or may not be like this side may be pushing in so what we're trying to do is get both of those levers to lift up and we're going to use the soot method here again to check it and remember on these compared to regular bit barrel locks we want to maintain spring pressure we pressure we don't want to bypass it at all because if you bypass it then uh, it's not really doing what it's supposed to do so as we're trying it we're kind of lifting up and we feel we were like hey it's it's a little bit looser you know, you can push up on the on the roll top part of the desk and start to get excited that thinking, you know, it may be close, but yes, you may be close, but you may not be close either. You may be working against yourself because when you're as you're pushing up one side of it, the other side is becoming firmly firmly entrenched into the strike. So we're gonna go ahead and set up our key real quick. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. Beware the burnt fingers. And we're going to put it in there. And as you turn it, it's gonna mark on one side and then on the opposite side on the opposite flag. So we're gonna put, put the spring pressure on it and we're gonna kinda of rock it back and forth. Rock it back and forth. Look at that. As we were rocking it, we were able to open it. So that may get you in, may get you to your key. That's just really how these locks are designed. Now we're gonna keep going with the key even though we just got in. Yay, we got in. But we're gonna keep going with the key to make it better. And if we look at the marks, we can see two very distinct marks. Those are the levers on that side. And on the other side, we've got one distinct mark. So what you can do there is this one is going to be After you get done cutting this key, you're pretty much gonna have three or four notches. So I'm gonna carefully get on the back end of this key. It may help to start with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one notch because I know it's I know it's either two or three levers, even though I can't see them. It's always gonna be two or three levers. There's just not enough room in the in the inside to have anything but two or three levers so I'm going to carefully start following it down on the backish back edge of the key towards the head and we're going to leave that middle one alone for right now the middle one you see how we're forming a middle one there now remember that most levers and locks are going to be pretty thin pretty thin brass so that's why we're not using, which we could use this carefully, but it's best to switch to your needle file because each one of those wafers is about that thick. So you don't want to you don't want to do too wide of one, otherwise you may, may be messing up the the lever that's next to it. Okay, since we got good readings on the on the inside part of the flag or the part towards the head we're gonna go ahead and knock it down and usually I knock it down oh you know about that yay much about yay much we're gonna do the other side because they both have to be equally cut my thumbs kind of getting tired from holding the key Another good reason there to have a pair of pliers with you to relieve some of that 
or a uh, vice grip hold the key steady while you're filing because your thumb will catch heck like I have I have no strength in my thumb so I'll tell you what I'm going to stop this for a minute and go grab a uh, uh, no I'm not I'm not I'm going to tough this out I'm going to tough it out I'm going to tough it out even though it hurts like heck let's see if I can knock off Now again, you could be using your, your, you know, uh, Dremel with a grinding blade. You could clamp it up in a vise, which would actually be a lot easier on your thumb. But once again, we're sitting in a living room of a fancy house with a fancy roll top desk. So we don't always have the luxury of power tools and things to make this go faster. Thus you would be charging accordingly for this service, I might add. We're going to go ahead and smooth up the edges. I know this video is kind of getting long in the tooth, but this is not a quick process. We're going to go ahead and try it in the lock and turn it. Give your, give your thing a wiggle. Turn it back and forth and you may be able to just get it to pop open. So we've agreed that, you know, we were able to get it open, but if we look, it doesn't work well because if we look, when we turn, and see the teeth down in there, those are the spring-loaded teeth that are grabbing that. And we turn it. What's happening at this point is the top teeth and one of the bottom teeth here. So there's still one lever grabbing into the strike. So we know that one of the two levers is not allowing it to open up like it should. So we're going to go ahead and sit this one more time. Now, one more time for my situation, it may actually take several of these to get the correct key to work, depending on how and where your levers are located in the lock. And despite everybody's hopes and dreams, they're not all the same key. There are a finite number of keys that can be made for it, but there is no magic master key. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put the spring pressure in there. We feel, we're feeling very good very good pressure on it. So we're not going to do both sides. We're just going to impression on the one side and see what kind of marks we're getting. And if we look at it on this side, we're going to see a mark on that middle flag and one there. So what we're going to want to do is, since we were working on this one originally, we need to bring this down a little bit more. So we're gonna go ahead and bring that down a little bit more. And you, well, before I just scratched it, there was a mark right there. You can see it. And that means that wafer is digging into the metal right there, where that lever is. 
It's saying it wants to go a little bit deeper. A little bit deeper. So we're gonna go a little bit deeper. You don't wanna go full deeper deeper, like hardcore deeper because it may actually mess you up in the long run. Ah. Ah. I'm gonna touch up this front end. them back and forth just depending on which one feels right and go ahead and just smooth that middle wafer off we're still not sure about that about that tip cut or the middle cut so we just want to we want to get a good smooth surface on it so I'm not really taking a whole lot of metal off I'm just flattening it and of course you may have some scratch over from doing it on this side um, so you just want to get them squared up as much as possible. All right, now this could just as easily be the middle one that I'm bringing down and leaving this one up. So we're going to take our key, let's go ahead and relock it. Oh no, we're locked out. And try it. Okay, that side's not working. Let's flip it over to the other side. And turn it. Ideally, you want the key to turn and kind of hold. So we see now that it's getting much easier to take our strike off by turning it either which way. Go ahead and set it one more time and get this video wrapped up. I'm surprised. I'm working on simultaneous videos and I'm very surprised. I don't doubt I'm going to have issues trying to save all this because I'm running low on room in my phone again. It's just been video crazy lately. Be careful not to dip your key in the wax or drop your key in the wax. <laughs> That adds a little bit of time to your task. So we got it set it up. We're gonna make sure the set's smooth. Hopefully this will be the final time. Put it in there, turn it, turn it, and see what we got. Okay, we're getting a good mark on that. So that probably needs to come down and we're getting a mark there. So if we we'll go ahead and take it apart one last time, we can see what we're really, what's really happening. It's kind of hard to do, but all right. So we can see when we turn it up here, and that's why this is hard to hard to show. Turn it up there. It's pushing down down here. When it pushes up on this side, it's pushing up on this side too. And we can see we actually have our key made at this point because it's opening both sides and that freely falls out. However, you could continue to make this key and file down the notches on this and what it would do then would hold open to a degree so and you can see that in the soot marks that are being left behind so let's just go ahead and knock it down and see what happens even though we have a key made and ready to go really we could we could go further with this one all right other 
Sun. And again, finish squaring it up. Take off the tip again, very lightly. And Smooth it down on the edges one last time. Bit and barrel and roll top desk keys like parallel edges, but they also like a little bit of a chamfer on the edges. So there, 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 there. Not necessary there, but just for the aesthetics of the key, we're going to go ahead and just chamfer, slight chamfer on each edge. It allows it to kind of ride a little bit more smoothly on the wafers, levers. Keep calling them wafers, they're actually levers. Okay. Take a good look at it. Got a little overhang there so we need to smooth that down and bring that in just a bit okay see what it does You see how it's passing that first lever and it's opening it up and that's allowing it to get down if we take the top levers off once they're out of the way your second lever is what's being pushed up so you have to get that first lever because it's the deepest lever on there you have to get it out of the way. So if we switched these around, it makes a whole different key. And you would be cutting your middle down and you see that the key won't turn. It really, it really won't let it kind of open correctly. And that's because that middle cut from the other one is actually hitting right there. So you would be getting, with your soot marks, if this key was in reverse, you would be getting better marks in the middle of the key compared to where it did for this key on the back edge towards the head. So to wrap that up, if y'all have any questions, let me know. I'm always glad to answer it or help you out. This is a neat little project to do. Um, hopefully it's not a project you're having to do if it's locked. But if necessary, this just kind of goes to show how one can oh, spring, get your roll top desk open and hopefully with a new key made for it and as always if y'all would smash that like that thumbs up button for me and if you have not subscribed i would really appreciate you subscribing to our channel we post a variety of things in the locksmith world 
and this is just being our latest one so we are open oh wait i didn't i didn't do that in camera we are open yay okay thanks for watching guys have a good one